Welcome back to another Daily Walk. Well, today I want to spend some time talking a little bit about what grace is and what grace is not. There's, of course, a, a, an error in our modern evangelicalism, which is, would be called hyper-grace. And hyper-grace, to its extreme, is going to basically teach that uh, it doesn't matter if we continue on in sin. And some people will say this is flat-out heresy. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I stand. And different hyper-grace teachers, who you'd call hyper-grace teachers, will disagree on different premises that we're talking about. So we have to stop and think. So I wanted to just spend a little bit of time talking about what grace is and what grace is not. And where this kind of came from is um, I was at a, at a writer's meeting with a lot of great, great Christians in the area. And we're looking over Hezekiah's prayer, which is the next book I will be releasing in the Kings of All Creation series, which will be out very soon, by the way. And uh, we're doing some final uh, evaluating some of the final edits. And one of the things people focus on there is there's a lot in there about Old Testament and judgment and all that, which, of course, because it's a study through the Book of Kings. So obviously there's a lot more in there about judgment than you would otherwise find. And so, but, but in the middle of this, I really wanted to focus on why it's important that we cast off sin. Because grace is a safety net. It's not something that we live in because, hey, let's get all the grace we can. In fact, Paul tells us specifically against that. We're going to turn to Romans, and believe it or not, we're not going to be in Romans chapter 1. We're going to be in Romans chapter 6 today. Actually, we have to kind of pick up in chapter 5. Because in the end of chapter 5, he's really talking about sin. He's talking about the results of justification. And we're going to pick up in 5.18. So then, as through one transgression there resulted in condemnation to all men, even though, uh, even through one act of righteousness, there will be justification of all men. So this is one act of, of uh, Adam caused original sin through the human race. Through one act, Jesus caused salvation for the race. Uh, verse 19, for though one man sin through, I keep on saying though as through in this passage. I've always done it for like ever. So my apologies. Verse 19, Romans 5, 19. For as through one man's disobedience there were many made a sinner, even so through the obedience of one the many will be made righteous. The law came so that the transgression would increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness to the eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So we stop there and go, wow! The lie was here, it showed us our sin, and the more sin we got, the more grace. Let's go sin a lot so we can get a lot of grace, because grace is clearly a good thing. Now, Paul addresses this and says, ah, no, 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 we're not going to do that, because he picks up in sin 6.1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may increase? Hey, let's go sin all the more, guys. Let's, let's find ourselves some, some, some evilness to engage in so we can have more grace. No, no. He says, verse 2, May it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus and have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through the baptism into death. And so as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, Certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with, so that we would no longer be slaves to sin, for he who has died is free from sin. So what we find in here is this interplay of grace. Grace is the safety net. Grace is not the thing we should be focused on, but the modern church wants to focus so much on grace. It's not appropriate. Grace is that thing that catches us, that we do not fall. In reality, what our task is, is to live out our life in Christ. Which means we sin less and less and less as through our sanctification we become one with Christ. So we want to become more sanctified. We want to grow in Christ. We want to learn more about what sin is and we want to cast that sin out of our life. And when we cast that sin out of our life, then we can become one with Christ. But we can never be completely free from sin. We can't be completely free from sin. We always will fall short. 
always, in the human condition, we will always fall short. And so as we fall short, God gives us the grace that we are not lost. So what I want to say here is grace is not something to be strived for. It's something that we have. It is an amazing good thing, but it is not something that we latch on to and, and hold on to to say, we're just going to keep on sinning in this world because it's all okay, I'm saved, and we have grace. That is a perversion. That is not what we want. So ultimately, when we have this situation, so, so the great hyper-grace debate boils around one of works. To some people in the world, to focus on sanctification, to focus on walking with Christ, which is exactly what the Bible commands us to. Walk no longer as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind is what Paul writes in Ephesians 4. Okay, um, John, whoever loves the world is an enemy of God. And I think that's James, actually. Um, they both say something very similar. I think I just, I pulled them both out of my head, and I think I actually quoted the James 1, James 4. And, and the fact is, though, is that we are commanded over and over. Just think about the times. Think of the adulterous woman brought before Jesus, which is kind of funny. Where was the adulterous man? They caught the woman, quote, in the act of adultery. Where was the man? It does take two people to commit adultery, just in FYI. I mean, maybe, maybe one's committing adultery, one's committing fornication. I mean, depending on how, how you do it. But at the same time, they bring this woman before Jesus. She was caught in the very act of adultery. Why did not bring the man also with her? And what does Jesus say? He says, go. Of course, everybody leaves. He says, go. Neither do I continue, condemn you. Go in sin no more. Two instances in the book of John. He heals somebody. He says, now go and sin no more. What was John's baptism? One of repentance. And the gospel is one of repentance. To repent of our sins. Now, to the extreme, some of the hyper-grace teachers, in their extreme, they will say, well, all that's technically Old Testament before the cross. It doesn't apply to us. And yes, it does, over and over through the scriptures. It's about sinning less and less, the doctrine of sanctification. Now, on the opposite side, some people say when you focus so much on the doctrine of sanctification, you're turning salvation into works. And no, I'm not turning salvation into works. Because works is not what saves you. It's just that works are something that occurs when you become one with Christ. You start to do more work in the Lord. You start to becoming more like Christ. And as we live out our Christian life, becoming more and more like Christ, less and less sin dominates our life. We engage less sin. We are controlled less by sin. And so what ends up happening here is we become more like Christ, sin less, and thus less overall grace as we move on in our life. Just as Paul says, shall we sin all the more? That so we sin greatly, so grace may abound? No. May it never be. Grace is our safety net. It is not the thing we focus on. Grace is that thing you focus on right when you're saved because you come to the depth of your sin and recognize in the grace of God you are saved. But grace is not something that the Christian is to walk in. Grace is the safety net. It is we walk in our walk with Christ. We walk in our sanctification. We walk in these things. Grace is the amazing thing to make sure we are never lost. So think about that when you start hearing and seeing more about what grace is. Look at this. This is not sin all the more that grace may all the more abound. That's not the case. He commands us first and foremost to walk in the likeness of Christ. That's what I want to say today. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments, and I hope that you enjoy your daily walk in our Lord.